Hello and welcome to Greek Verse a Day. Today we're translating Revelation 1-9. As always, you should be working from your reader's edition and looking to the screen here for help. We're going to read through Revelation 1-9 two different times, once slowly, one, once a little bit faster, give you a little bit of time to do some translation of your own before I jump in and give you some help. I want to uh, offer two comments on pronunciation before we do our first slow reading of this verse here. So this is uh, the name John, I-O-A-N-A-S. So these first three vowels, I-O-A, are going to all be pronounced separately from one another. None of these are diphthongs. Remember, a diphthong is two vowels that combine to make one sound. In this case, we have three separate vowels all pronounced separately, I-O-A-N-A-S. And then over here, we have soon koinonas. So this gamma here uh, is pronounced with a nasally n sound when it uh, comes before a kappa, a gamma, or a key. So in this case, before a kappa, we're going to get the soon sound rather than su ga. No g sound in there, the nasally n sound instead. Uh, instead, for soon kononi, uh, excuse me, soon koinonas. So let's do our first reading slowly, then speed it up the second time. Ego. Ioannes, Ha, Adelphos, Humon, Kai, Sunkononos, In, Te, Flipse, Kai, Basilea, Kai, Hupamone, In, Iesu, Egenamen, In, Te, Neso, Te, Kalumene, Potmo, Dia, Ton, Logon, Tu, Theu, Kai, Tain, Marturion, Iesu. One more time, a little bit faster. Ego, Ioannes, Ha, Adelphos, Humon, Kai, Sunkononos, In, Te, Thlipse, Kai, Basilea, Kai, Hupamone, In, Iesu. Egenamen in te neso te kalumene patmo dia ton logon tu theu kai tain marturion yesu. So go ahead at this point and pause, see what you can make of this verse uh, with respect to and using the tools in your Greek reader's New Testament. All right, to start translating this, we have right away a bunch of nominatives. And what's going on here is that we have ego, eo, anes. This is going to be our subject of the sentence, I, John. So this I here is going to be a sort of emphatic personal pronoun, first person pro personal pronoun. So we're going to be looking for a verb that's in the first person. Uh, and we're going to get it down here. This is going to be our main indicative verb in this sentence. Egenomen. So this is going to be an aorist, middle, and specifically deponent. Indicative, first person, singular, from genomai, meaning uh, to be or become. So, ego Ioannes, I, John, and this is, we're going to translate this was, and we're going to come back to it in just a minute here, but we're first going to deal with this long string. And this whole long string is a bunch of different, uh, well, actually two different nominatives. We have a nominative here and another nominative here. Um, and so what these are doing, we've seen Revelation do this often, they are in apposition to the main nominative in the sentence. They're giving us more information about John. So you can think of these as sort of looking back to John and giving us more information. So Ha Adelphos, uh, the brother, Hamon of you all, second person personal pronoun in the genitive. Um, so uh, your all's brother and, and then soon kononos, uh, this is a word, a compound word, uh, soon, which is means what or with or together, not what with or together, with or together, excuse me. And koinonos means common. Um, so this sort of combined, this means a sharer or a participant um, or uh, a, uh, it's also used, uh, it's the word for partner, like a business partner. Um, so the, a sharer or a partner in te thlipse kai basilea kai hupamone. So this is one prepositional phrase uh, with in. 
So in then with three different datives. And notice how all three different datives, they, ha they have the same definite article here. So uh, in fancy grammatical terms, we would say that the, uh, the article governs all three of the uh, all three of the dative nouns here, which all have the exact same parsing information, dative, feminine, singular. And by having only one article governing all three, it puts them in sort of closer relationship to one another. So we have uh, tribulation, kingdom, and endurance. Um, so these are all sort of seen as a unit rather than as three separate things. If we were to have uh, te flip, say, te basileia and te hupamone, it would be more sort of three different things. But with the uh, the article standing in front of or standing for all three of these, it, it brings them into sort of closer unity. So, uh, and so, uh, sorry, hupamone in Iesu, in Jesus. So this is, uh, in Jesus is sort of being said with respect to all of these Things. Your partner in tribulation and in the kingdom and in endurance uh, in Jesus. So all of that to say, this whole thing is sort of uh, one big subject of this verb. I, John, was, and then another prepositional phrase here, in te neso te calamune, uh, mene, excuse me, patmo. Uh, in the island, so literally in, but in English we're going to do it on, the island, uh, the one, te, notice how this is matching here. Again, we have a phrase in apposition to. It's giving us more information about the island. The island, the one called Patmos. So here we have an adjectival participle um, that's uh, in, that's modifying Patmo here, giving us the name of the island. On the island, the one called Patmos uh, dia with the accusative after it, ton logon is going to mean because of, because of the word of God and, and then so there's another sort of presumed dia right here. Again, we would say uh, this preposition dia governs or goes with both of these accusatives. It's taking two different accusatives here. Uh, so John is on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and because of the witness of of Jesus. So notice the uh, the genitive here, yes, ooh, that ooh ending of the genitive. So if we're to put this all together, we have I, John, your brother and partner in tribulation and the kingdom and uh, endurance in Jesus was in, in or on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and because of the witness of Jesus.